Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I'm so happy you're here with me today, and I'm truly grateful. Thank you for spending time with me and my special guest today, Danielle Mendoza. Today, we're going to talk about writing a book. How many of you out there, I know I can't see you raise your hands, but raise your hand if you've ever thought about writing a book. And raise your other hand if you've ever thought, I can't write a book. I don't even know where to start. I'm not a writer. Well, guess what? We're going to squash some of those negative thoughts around writing today because every person out there has a story to tell. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, writing a book can be an incredible way to connect with your audience on a deeper level, but also showcase you as the expert that you truly are. So we're going to dive into some logistics around that today, some thought provoking, maybe even exercises you can do to get yourself to believe that you are capable of writing a book and then formulate your story to share. Without further ado, Danielle Mendoza, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hey, Robin. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I, As you know, I wrote a book, and I think that it was my book was more on a personal level. However, that also translates to my business because so many women struggle with anxiety around entrepreneurship and also just negative mindset. So the two go hand in hand. So it's been a gift for me to get speaking engagements, to get, um, you know, summit invitations and a lot of different things. So, and podcast interviews too, right? And I know before we started recording, we talked a little bit about that, how being on a podcast is, it's free marketing. It's getting to tell your story and resonating emotionally, building that connection with other people. So it's super cool to have a book, I think. So, okay, I'm going to ask you to tell the listeners, if you would, Danielle, a little bit about you and your journey and how you got to this point today to not be a book coach, but to be someone who really enlightens and inspires and empowers people to put their pen to paper and write a book. Yeah. So I got my start funnily enough. I was a stay at home mom for like 10 years and I was doing nothing in business and I'd had businesses prior to that, but I believed that I had to throw everything of myself into raising my kids. And I became kind of a shell of myself in the process of that. I was really unhappy. Uh, I wasn't feeling fulfilled at all. And I felt super guilty about that because as moms, I feel like, oh, we're supposed to, you know, love our kids. And I do, I love my kids, but I didn't love only being a mom to them, even though part of me believed that that's what I was supposed to do. So I had to move through that guilt and just decide that if I was really going to be the best mom to them, I had to be the best version of myself and the best version of myself I knew had a business. You know, it, it feels so good to me to be in business. It creates so much more meaning and connection in life for me. And that's, I think, true of a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, our businesses go beyond just this idea of making money. It's about being who we are in the world and living as ourselves fully and impacting the lives of other people. I mean, I knew I was impacting the lives of my husband and my kids, and I felt good about that. But I also knew that I was being called to something bigger by God, and I wanted to lean into that, and I wanted to obey. And so I got into coaching, and I got several coaching certifications, and I decided to start coaching teens. And then I shifted to spiritual coaching with women who were in that space between biopsies and testing and diagnosis, because I had had my own experience with skin cancer. And that experience left me confused and wondering and challenged in a whole new way because I had to face this idea of mortality. Like one day I could not be here. And that propelled me even further into business. It showed me that I needed to show up exactly as who I was every day, starting now, not someday when my kids were older, but this was the time because we just don't know what's going to happen. And I want my legacy, like that story of who I am 
to be a legacy of touching lives, of helping people live as their best selves. And then I got into business coaching because I realized there were so many women out there who were scared to start a business and they were really being put off by the noise of the six figure world. This idea that you have to get to six figures, you know, it's, you listen to that long enough and you start to feel like you're not successful at all, unless you get to the six figure mark. And that's the bottom level of success. And that's just not true. It's a, it's like a valid goal to have for sure. I have my own six and seven figure goals, but we can be happy and feel successful in the five figure range. You know, I had a client in my business consultancy who's retired and she's like, I just want to make 25,000 extra dollars a year because that would be amazing. It would be life-changing for me. I'd be able to take these big vacations with my husband. And I know I don't want to work as many hours as I would need to, to get to six figures. So I started working with those women more and more, helping them build a business model that fit their lives instead of fitting their lives into a very busy business model. And as I was working with these women at the starting level, I started networking with women like yourself, women who are more at the level I was at in business, because it's a lonely thing to be an entrepreneur, like in the corner of your bedroom every day. And so I started networking and I wrote a book and those women were so supportive of me and my book. And soon enough, they were reaching out to me and they're like, Hey, I know this isn't what you do, but I'm thinking about writing this thing, or I know this isn't what you do, but can you help me? And after three people said that to me, I finally realized, okay, God, I hear you. You're calling me into this. This can be what I do. And so I started putting together the expert book accelerator. And like you said, it's it's about being so much more than a book coach. Book coaches are great and they help you with the writing and story formulation, but I'm specifically working with women entrepreneurs and it goes beyond just what story do we want to tell, but what are the right stories to tell? The right stories to connect with our audience, to connect on a human level with the reader who might become our best potential client. And how do we guide them through that process of mindset shift, of personal growth, of quick wins so that they learn to trust us and trust what we can do so that they're excited and enticed to come work with us. And that's how the Expert Book Accelerator was born. And here I am today. I love it so much. Oh my gosh, so much of what you said. <laughs> like, okay, I have to backtrack a little bit here. Um, so back to the whole stay-at-home mom thing. I, you know, when I went to pharmacy school, I got a doctor degree and I wanted this high power career. But when I had kids, I was like, I don't want anybody else to raise my kids. I wanted to be forefront with them. And I wanted to, you know, just be that mom that was always on. But I needed mental stimulation. I'm like you, I needed to be fulfilled. Like I'm too, I was just too driven and not too driven in a negative way, but driven in a way that I needed something for myself too. And I was so much happier when I had something for myself. I mean, I will never, ever regret all those, the time I spent with my kids, but having a business of my own enabled me to be able to spend time with them when it was needed and when I wanted to and when they needed me to not missing sporting events and all that kind of stuff. And so it was really great to have the best of both worlds. Absolutely. I, I found that once I went into business, it became more quality time. Mm -hmm. I had lots of quantity time as a stay at home mom, but in that quantity for them and nothing for me, it really lacked a sense of quality. And so it was when I actually added more into my life that I was able to still spend a great amount of time with them, but make it that true quality time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. And I, I want women to understand that you can do both. I and, mean, you know, you hear so much about balance and, oh, you can never have balance or, oh, you know, whatever. There's so many different opinions and perspectives out there, but it really is what you make of it. And you can have exactly what you want if you just put both feet forward and go all in on both when it's necessary to be all in, in one or the other, because it's almost never at the exact same time. And we so, go through seasons. It's like, 
I, when I started in business, when my kids were little, I started copywriting actually was my first like kind of side gig. Um, and I wrote during nap time and after I put them to bed and that was it, that was, you know, all the time there really was for me to do something else. Cause they were one and three and they needed a lot yeah. more of my attention, just safety wise, let alone, you know, just the needs of, of toddlers. And so that's what that looked like in that season. And then as they got older, I was able to take more hours for business, develop my coaching business grow into my business consultancy. And now, you know, I've got a teenager and a preteen and we were just talking about this. I'll be traveling for the next two weeks and it's fine. It works out well because they're at an age where they want more space too. They're off with yeah. their friends, they're doing their things. And so we just grow through these seasons and we allow our business to grow alongside of that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. Um, so the other thing that, you know, you were talking about the process of writing your book and how you had that support system. And that's so empowering to have the support system. I think a lot of us, when we think about writing a book, we have intimidation, we experience fear, we experience imposter syndrome. And to have people in your community hold you up and support you in that process and recognize what it is like because it's not easy. You know, it's really hard to be disciplined enough to sit down and write a book. But if you have a strategy in place, you can do it relatively with ease and grace, right? Absolutely. I mean, I wrote my book in two months, which the average person spends over a year writing their book. And I think that's because they spend a lot of time questioning, unsure, sitting at their computer, walking away, coming back to it, and also believing this fallacy that we can only write when we're at our computer. So I wrote a good chunk of my book in the bathtub, in the shower, in my car while I was driving by just opening up my notes app and doing voice to text. And then I would copy and paste those thoughts and those ideas into my document later when I was sitting at the computer and kind of clean it up and fit it all in. But it worked out so well because I started with a very clear framework for what my book was going to be about, what each chapter was going to be about, the thoughts that I wanted to share in each chapter and the important takeaway for the reader. And when you have that kind of framework, which is something I help women build inside the Expert Book Accelerator, it becomes so much easier to write your book because it really is just about talking to this person. And as women, we have a lot to say, like we really believe certain things. And we want people to know that and we want to encourage others and inspire others. And so when you give yourself that space inside of that structure to do that, it actually comes very, very quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, and you know, what's funny is I started my book with a notebook on the beach. <laughs> and then just like you said, I'd be driving in the car and I'd, or walking the dogs or taking a shower and I would use the voice text in my notes. And then, and I still have so many of those notes, but then I would just transfer them over into the document, the word document that I was writing in. So I, if we allow ourselves that time to be creative, the thoughts just come to us, but it's important to, and, you know, we've had people on the show about tapping into creativity. And I think a lot of people lose that sense of creativity because of the chaos of life in general. And mm. I'm going to link the one of the episodes we did on creativity in the show notes, because when you give yourself the opportunity to tap into your creativity and start re-recognizing the areas that you are creative in, it helps you so incredibly much just with all of your life and business, everything you do. And writing, yes, it is creative. However, you don't have to consider yourself as a creative to be able to write, especially if you are telling your story, especially if you're writing something that is related to your business. As long as you have that ability to be somewhat creative, somewhat strategic, you can put it all together. Um, so I encourage everybody to, to just start. But before you start, listen in for Deanna's framework so that we can, you can start with a purpose and with a strategy in place so that you don't go off the rails and then get burnt out trying to accomplish it. 
Absolutely. And, you know, you touched on something there saying like, we don't have to consider ourselves creatives to be able to write something. You don't even have to consider yourself a writer. I mean, that's the beautiful thing of the women that I work with. They are experts and geniuses at what they do in their business. They're not expert and genius writers and they don't need to be. I think also we grow up in this school system that teaches us that the writing we turn in has to be very refined, you know, dare we say perfect so that we can, you know, have done the best that we can do and get that A. And that is not how it works when it comes to writing a book. Neil Gaiman has a great saying, he's a famous author, and he says, first drafts are trash. And it's true. He's released like three chapters of first draft from one of his best known books. And they're terrible. I mean, you try reading them and you're like, oh, if this was the book, I would not want to read it. It's one of my favorite books. And so it's really funny to see that in this professional author who has made his living through writing. So it, I think we can use that to inspire ourselves to say, I don't need to be a brilliant writer to be able to share my story. That's why we have editors. That's why we have people who look through our book. That's why we have beta readers. That's why we have people who help us refine this product that we're putting out into the world. It doesn't need to be our zone of genius. We just need to be committed to putting the words on the page in order to share our genius with those who need it. Mm, I love that so much. So let's talk about where to start. Yeah, that's a great question. It's probably the number one question I get all the time. And most women believe that they need to start by formulating their idea. They need to know what they're going to write about. They need to know what the book is going to be about. And often it's funny, they start with a title in mind. And that's kind of out of order. In, in fact, it's best to start with, you know, who are you talking to? Who is this person that you're talking to in your book? Because as we start to write, we tend to think we're talking to everyone. And as we all know in business, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one and it doesn't land. And so we have to really define very clearly who are we talking to. And when it comes to being an entrepreneur and writing a book to build your legacy, but also to scale your business, you're talking to your best potential client. And you're usually talking to the one who's fairly early on that client journey towards getting to know you, getting to like you, getting to trust you. And then I ideally jumping in as a client in your service. And so you want to make sure that you know that person really, really well. So before you define any idea, any title, anything about what your book is going to be about, you need to define who that person is. Oh, I love that so much. It, it, you know, from a personal branding perspective, we talk a lot about that, how to identify your soulmate client. And, you know, there's so many people out there that say, oh, you have to know what kind of car they drive, what kind of handbag they carry and all of these details. But really what you need to know is what are they thinking? Absolutely. What is the problem that is keeping them up at night? What is the challenge that when they're doing dishes after dinner, they're thinking, how am I ever going to get through this? And when you start thinking in terms of what they're thinking, the, the solution to their problem becomes forefront for you. And sometimes that's hard for us to see because we're sitting in the seat of the expert. We're way on the other side of that problem. We've usually solved it for ourselves and then for, you know, potentially hundreds of other other people. And so it's hard to get into that starting mindset, that framework of like, what are they really thinking? And so it's best generally, like, where do you start when you're going to write a book? talk to some of those people, get those people on the phone, get them on Zoom, hit record, and just ask them to tell you about what their problem is and what it is that they're thinking and, and have some strategic questions to draw that out of them. And then you have their words and you have their understanding so much more clearly than you ever would trying to formulate it on your own because you're you're just like way far away from those weeds for sure. Absolutely. And sometimes you can think back to where you were when you started, if your clients are on a similar journey that you were on. And a lot of times that is exactly what happens. We go through something and then we see, oh, wow, I can help someone else go through this now or establish this business or do this thing. Um, but the one thing that I want to emphasize is that I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> 
Robin, where's your mind today? I don't know. Poof, it's gone. But I, I do want to emphasize when we talk about um, like what you were just saying, ask them questions, get to know them. It's use their voice, voice a customer is what I like to call that. And you can do that. Now we have so many tools, even like Voxer messenger, go through discovery calls that you've had in the past with potential clients or clients that hired you and see what they said, ask, you know, look at why did they contact you? How did they find you? And what was the big struggle that they contacted you for? Because sometimes when you actually have all of this data under your fingertips already, and if you don't, it always helps to get new perspectives also and ask new questions to new people. But I think that is such sound advice and it's truly empowering whenever you're trying to write copy for your website or start to write a book. And we have great tools now too, like the AI chat GPT. You can take all that data of these things that your people have said to you and input it into that. And that AI program can help you draw out the common threads. What are the things that are similar if it's hard for you to see from that kind of 30,000 foot view, because they've all said it a little bit differently, just feed it into the AI and let the AI kind of spit out your client's words back to you. And you'll, you'll get that overview very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I honest to goodness, things are so much simpler now than they ever were before, but you know, the other thing I wanted to emphasize too, when we're talking about technology and you mentioned this before and that concept of, I call it bro marketing, where six figures and above, you have to make six figures and above, or you're not successful. And I meant to emphasize this earlier, but I think when you approach your business or even approach writing a book, like you said, you wanted to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy that demonstrates I made an impact on other people's lives. You know, when you think about that, who cares how much money you're making? What legacy do you want to make when you build this business or when you start to write a book? I wanted to emphasize that and I meant to do it before. So I just threw that in there. But so, okay, now we have that foundation for starting to write, right? So first we're going to not think about the title, but we're going to get the voice of our customers. Think about who we're writing to or for, and then we can start thinking about breaking out the chapters, titling, and writing the actual content. Do I have that right? Yes, but I will insert the caveat of it's important to work with someone who does like what I do to help you break down what that book is going to be about. So inside the Expert Book Accelerator, we go through this process together and I call it building the profitable page turner framework. We want our book to be profitable, but we want it to be interesting to the reader. We want to keep them turning the page, moving through it. I can't tell you how many nonfiction books I've downloaded and I start reading it. And it's just like all this information coming at me off the page and I, I can't do it. I, I just have to close the book and I never go back to it because it's boring information. Like nobody wants to read an encyclopedia. Let's just be real. We want stories. We want things that connect us to these takeaways and these insights that you as the author are hoping to get the reader to experience. And so it's important to build a structure that has storytelling in it. That's not just what do I want them to know, but it also has an eye for how do I want them to know this? How do I want to demonstrate this? And in the process, we're sharing stories often about ourselves, things that we've gone through. Like you said, we've usually been on that path. And so it helps the reader not only to get those insights, but to get to know us on a very human level. It makes us more real and more tangible to them. And that's such a valuable thing to do when you're thinking about nurturing someone into the client experience. Mm, I love that so much. And it's, it's so incredibly true. Stories are everything because when you want to make an emotional connection, like truly they're everything. Absolutely. And there is a right way and a wrong way to tell a story too. And I think sometimes we tell stories from the information standpoint, we're like this happened, then this happened and this happened. And that is a great foundation, like get that onto the page to get it out of your head and capture it. But then we have to go back and we have to create true storytelling, which is different than just giving the information of point A, point B, point C. We have to draw the reader into that experience. And the best way we can do that is using the five senses. 
You know, so if I tell you I walked into the room and it was dark and I was really afraid, that's one thing. You can kind of put yourself there and you're like, okay, the room is dark, got it, fear. I kind of know what that feels like. But if I tell you I walked into the room and the black was as thick as fog and I felt the metallic taste of fear rise up in my mouth and my chest felt squeezed in, that brings you into the experience. Now you're standing in my body understanding what it was like to walk into that dark room. And there's a very big difference there for the reader. And it's something that's going to keep them reading on when you can engage them in that way. Mm, Yeah, it's so true. I remember when I was writing my book and my editor was like, you need to add more to this story. There's more to this story. And I mean, because my book was memoir and it was such a sensitive subject about mental health and anxiety that it was really hard because I was being so vulnerable But the more she pushed me and the more I did that, the better, the easier, I guess it became and the better I became at telling the stories and including details that people could relate to or associate with and understand that, okay, I understand what they're going through because the the similarities in physical symptoms or, you know, visceral experiences Absolutely. It crystallizes to the reader that you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've all had that fear, even if just as children of being in a dark room and like, oh my gosh, what's around the corner? What's coming? And when we just say like, oh, I walked into a dark room, everyone's like, okay, but what does that mean to you? And when you can say what that really means and feels like to you, then the reader who feels that way can really identify and feels very connected to you. That's why storytelling connects us as human beings, because human experiences are universal. And we forget that. We forget that because we get lost in the details of our story. And while the details of someone else's story might be different, that overall feeling feelings of loneliness, feelings of being misunderstood, feelings of being lost. Those things are universal. And that connects us to the reader on such a deeper level, which is why storytelling has survived for thousands of years. I mean, there it's it's been at the core of every culture for so long because it is something that allows humans to stand together, mm-hmm. even in the difference of the details. Yeah, it bonds us. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you also talk about, and we talked about understanding the, the, the client, the, the reader, the person that you're writing this book for, but it's also important. You said to get into their mindset, like how you get their best. Yes. And that, yes, that will create a more powerful book. So we talk just a little, we talk a lot about mindset on the show because it's just such a critical component of creating a successful business and being able to take intentional action and making sound decisions. But let's, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So when you're writing an expert book as an expert in what you do, it's this nonfiction experience. It's to share something with the reader, not only so they can see themselves in the experience of it, but so they can get some wins. So they can work through kind of a miniature version or the first baby steps of your process. And that helps them trust you. That helps them trust that you can get them the big win. When we talk about getting in to understand you know, their problems and their desires and what they truly want, That's a start, but we have to be able to show them that we can get them from that problem to what they truly want. And we do that by understanding the mindset. So every customer who comes to us has this starting mindset of where they first popped into our world on their journey. And then they have a shift that happens and it puts them into the mindset of the yes client. The one who is like, I don't even care how much it costs. I know you can solve my problem. Just take my money and let's be done with it. And so when you can understand those two mindsets and understand most importantly, the gap that's between them, then you can develop a framework for your book that guides the reader through that mindset growth, through that mindset shift. What do they need to know, understand, and believe to go from that early journey customer to that yes customer? And that's what we set up the book to do. And that's what makes the profitable page turner framework profitable because we're helping these people go on this mindset journey 
getting wins along the way so that they believe in the shifts and they believe in the insights because they have tangible evidence of it in their own lives and in themselves. And then at the end of the book, they're left with this yes mindset and they are ready to take the next step to get in touch with you and to get closer into your orbit and ideally jump in as a client. Mm, I love that. I love it. And I, I can see how almost, I don't want to use the word easy because I know when writing a book, it never feels truly easy, but when you use a framework like this and you see that the end result is there's just no option, but the fact that it's going to generate revenue. So when you know that it's going to be successful, just because you followed a certain framework, it's like, heck yeah, why would I not do this? <laughs> and the beautiful thing is you can start leveraging that right away. So when I decided to write my book, I was like, okay, I'm writing this book. And I got really clear on who the book was for and the conversation that I wanted to have with these people and why that conversation was important. And so I shared that. I was like, Hey, everybody, you know, on social media, I'm writing this book. This is the conversation I want to have with women about turning your idea into a business that you love. And I think it's super important because so many of us are held back by the things we think or believe, and we don't understand manifestation. My book is called Manifest Success. So it's, it's manifesting that business that you love. And I think it's taught so wrong in the world. And so I'm setting that right in this book. I landed two clients before that book was even written. Two people came to me and were like, yes, I am in, this is what I want. This is what I've been looking for. So it is so powerful even to just start talking about what you want to write, let alone once it's written and it's in the hands of people. You know, I got so many messages from people about how my book touched them, about how it made them believe in themselves. And, you know, back to that idea of impact over money, that just means so much to me. And then of course that led to the money because it led more people into my business because they did finally believe in themselves. They did finally feel like someone could explain manifestation to them in a tangible, implementable way. And so that impact translates into the money, not the other way around. I think that's why we come to it with this impact first idea of building that legacy, touching the lives of others. And then those who are ready are naturally going to step in to what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that so much. So what is your perspective on manifestation? Like when you say the world has it wrong, tell me what, because I have a very strong opinion on manifestation and that the, I did a whole episode on it and I'll link it in the show notes. There's a blog post as well. So I would love, I would love to have your, your perspective on that. Yeah. So I think manifestation is done so wrong because it's done from this idea of formulate the big dream and then sit and visualize that dream. And that's kind of where it ends in terms of what the world at large teaches. And I want to point out, first and foremost, I talk about this in my book, there's a difference between dreaming and visualizing. And dreaming is actually this kind of dopamine fueled experience that keeps us stuck in the dream, where we just enjoy it so much, we're stuck kind of in this la la land versus visualizing something, making it tangible and real. So manifestation is the outward you know, tangible expression of something that we've thought. So when we think like, I want a chocolate cupcake with pink frosting, I can see that very clearly in my mind. I can go to the store and get chocolate cake batter. I can mix it up. I can make pink frosting. And the next thing I know, there's a cupcake in my hand and I can eat it. And when we're visualizing that, we can actually start to salivate. Like our body is preparing itself for eating this chocolate cupcake. We're excited about it and we're more motivated to go do it. Now, cupcake's an easy example because everyone believes in cupcakes. Your family is probably like, heck yeah, make the cupcakes. Like they'll even help you. They'll go to the store for you, whatever it is. And so it's, it's a very easy thing to manifest, but it gives us that basis understanding. And when it comes to business dreams and visualizing business success, it can be a little bit harder because you don't always have the buy-in of everyone around you. 
And so that's why I say the foundation of manifestation is getting in touch with your higher power. And I know a lot of Christians struggle with the idea of manifestation because it is kind of in that new age woo woo world, but it's all in Philippians 4, 6. So if you want to go to the Bible right there, you can see God's recipe for manifesting. And it's about first and foremost, getting in touch with God, getting in touch with your higher power and saying, what do you have for me? What are you calling me into? then developing that intuitive trust of, yes, this is what is for me. And I'm going to take the action to move into that. And we start by visualizing that, but not the total end point. Sometimes visualizing all the way to the end point sticks us in what I call the fog. I think of it as like being on a beach and you, you can hear the water and you can hear the waves, but you can't see it because there's so much fog. So you take 10 steps forward and next thing you know, you can see 10 more steps ahead. And the more you continue to move forward, eventually you can see the water, you can see those waves crashing. And that's what it can be like with business success. I can see five steps in front of me, but I can't see 25. Uh -huh. That's okay. Take the five steps and then see what you see from there. So it's really important to make sure that everything in your visualization is very tangible, that it's in full color, it's close up, it feels right there with you and real. And then from there, it's taking action. That piece is missed so often. We have to allow the gratitude, the intuitive trust, the visualization to drive action. And I think like 75% of our energy actually needs to be in that consistent action taking and then from there, the last step is to be open to receiving. We self-sabotage so much because we're not actually open to receiving something. You know, when I work with women who are starting new businesses, often they feel scared of their success. They feel scared of what that's actually going to look like and feel like, and they close themselves off and they self-sabotage left and right. They start to question themselves. They get stuck in doubt, overwhelm, fear, worry, self-pity, you know, and it brings it all crashing to the ground. So that's why in manifestation, we've got to be able to stay open to receiving. So I outlined that five-part framework in my book and I walk you through how, you know, we, we learn it in this linear way, but it doesn't always go linearly. Like we bounce around from part to part we have to be open to receiving. So we have to feel gratitude. Then we take more action. We've got to visualize the next step. And then we've got to always go back to our higher power, go back to God and say, okay, is this right? Is this what you have for me? Is this my next step forward and validate it in that way? So I see it as something that is so much more concrete, I think, than the rest of the world tells it. And it really is founded in this idea of connecting with your higher power first and foremost, and not just creating the life that you think you would love or you think you should create or what's big and fancy on TV or what everyone else is saying is success, but defining your own success first and foremost from that connection. Oh, gosh. Okay. So we're on the same page here. I always get really nervous talking about that because you know, this whole new age woo woo manifestation stuff is like, oh, I want $10,000. It's going to fall out of the sky into my bank account. And that does not happen. Like it's not possible. Every single gift we have comes from God, every single gift. And that intuitive power you're talking about is the Holy Spirit. He's working in us. He's, he's exactly. helping us. He's, he's helping us think he's guiding us with, with our thoughts and giving us the wisdom and knowledge, you know, the fruits of the spirit. So I love this perspective because I have been so opposed to even the, the phrase manifesting because of everything that you see online. But this is so important to understand that, yeah, we can visualize our future five steps at a time. Like you said, we can't visualize what's going to happen 10, 15, 20 years from now. We can't visualize what our bank account's going to look like in five years or even a year. But what we can visualize is that God is holding us up. He's supporting us and he wants things for us. He's calling us to things. So if we're aligned with our values, our visions and our passions, and we listen to that purpose he's calling us for, he's going to guide us if we're open to it, but we have to be open to it and we have to receive. But yeah. the most important thing you said was the gratitude piece. We have to be grateful for everything that the Holy Spirit gives us and guides us towards, right? Yeah. And grateful for everything that's coming that we can't even see. I mean, I yeah. think when we do try to visualize that end point and we say like, I want a million dollars in my bank account, you might be closing off 
the magnitude of what God actually has for you. It says in the Bible that, you know, it's greater than we can imagine. So if we're focused on only achieving what we can imagine, we are limiting God. We are limiting what he can do in our lives. So when we focus on those next best steps and we move forward in that way, we will end up in a whole different place than we ever thought we would. And it will just be beyond our wildest dreams because that's what God has for us. But he wants it to make us better, to make us point to him, to make us, you know, display his glory and not our own. So we have to make sure that we're doing it in that humble way. And humble doesn't mean, you know, oh, I'm not any good and being self-deprecating. Humble just means knowing that all of the greatness that is you comes from within you, from your higher power. So when you can step into, you know, the magnitude of what God has for you and you can say, wow, God, like, I can't believe you could use me in this way to do this. That's humility. Mm -hmm. That's submitting. That's being, you know, submit means under with. That's being under God with everyone else. You're not above anyone else. And you're just honored. Like, it just becomes such a humbling honor. And Mm -hmm. I feel that way every time I work with my clients, I see the greatness that you know, I'm able to help draw out of them. It's because of this gift that God yeah. gave me. I, I don't know how to explain where it comes from in my brain. I truly think it's the Holy Spirit when I'm talking with people and I'll say something. This is why I record all my meetings. So they'll be like, can you say that again? And I'm like, I don't even remember what I just said because it didn't yeah. come from me. It just came through me. And when I can surrender to that, things are so much greater than I could ever imagine or make yeah. them be on my own. Yeah. And I would imagine after hearing you say that, because the same exact thing happens to me, I think, God, how did I know that? Like, (laughs) (laughs) because I, I, honest to goodness, like some of the things that I'm, I think back, like if I listen to a recording or, or someone says, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I'm like, thank the Holy Spirit. I feel that way when I read my book, when I reread parts of my book, I'm like, dang, that was good. That wasn't me. Like, I don't even remember having those thoughts. But my guess is that you do the same thing I do. And it's, I do bring it, I do ask the Holy Spirit for his guidance because I know that, you know, who, whoever I'm going to bless that day is a blessing from God. It's a blessing that I get to bless someone, but that person, God's putting them in, putting me in the position to be able to bless them. He's connecting us. And I, I like to use that, the phrase, and I'm actually going to break this episode out into two, two this interview into two episodes because we're like going so over, but this is such a powerful conversation. Um, And I love talking about this with people that were on the same page. I can't talk about manifestation. I can't talk about visualization with people that are, you know, like think that they can do it on their own because we cannot, we cannot, it has to come from God and we have to trust him because some of the things that we, you know, people want to manifest or people want to, um, you know, tap into the future and all of those things, it's not biblical. Mm, And we're not, we're not capable of doing that. And I think it's really important to, I guess, reiterate that, that, you know, everything that we have comes from God, but if it's not for us, if it's not his will, if he doesn't want that for us, it's not going to happen. And it won't go well if it does. That's for sure. I mean, it's something that's so funny it, being open to receive you know it has so many layers yes open to receive the clients and the money and the gifts and the things that show up in our life but it's it is like you said first and foremost being open to receiving the holy spirit and being open to receiving that guidance and and that power i mean i had kind of a an inkling years ago when I, when I first stepped into authoring, I was in a multi-author book and that meant I was one of the contributing authors with 22 other women. And I wrote a chapter and we were supposed to write, you know, what is our vision for impact for the world? And I wrote, and I remember writing this and thinking that I was crazy. I wrote that I want to impact the lives of 10 million people. I was like 10 million people. That is so many, like at this time I was working (laughs) one-on-one with people and I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to touch the lives of 10 million people 
when I'm working one-on-one with people, like there's not enough years left in my life to make that possible. But as I've stayed open to that and I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you that this is something you have for me. And I'm going to admit that I have no idea how to do that. I have no idea what that looks like. I'm just going to take every next step that you call me into. Well, now on this side of it, I'm like, I see this. This was four years ago that I received this word. And now I'm like, oh, every time I help a woman write her book and she's impacting the lives of thousands of people with her book, I was part of that impact. Mm -hmm. And I'm not forward facing in that impact. I'm not listed on her book. It's her Mm -hmm. book. It's her wisdom. It's her words. It's her relationship with God and what she received through the Holy Spirit to put into word in her book. But I had a part to play in that. And I just feel so honored by that. And now I'm like, oh, 10,000 is going to be easy. Like now I see how that works. But if I had tried back then to formulate an offer or a group program or become one of the big internet gurus who's going to have 2 million followers and that would never work. Like that would just never happen. Uh-huh. And and that's, that's not even who I want to be. Like when I first had that thought, I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's not what I want, but I trusted what he wants for me. And I was able to move through that. And now I just see how easy it will be as long as I continue to play out step after step that Mm -hmm. that's going to come. Yeah. And, you know, the listeners have heard me say this before, but I'm a big believer in the domino effect of good. Every little holy moment we create. And that holy moment can simply be just us trusting in the Holy Spirit. It could be us putting a smile on someone else's face. It could be anything. It could be coaching someone and giving someone else the opportunity to succeed. Every single time we do something, we create that domino effect of good. And if you think of, you know, a rock going into the water and that ripple effect, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it may start with us. We don't need the credit for that. Of course, we can feel good about it, but it all started with God through us to these other people that then branches out so immensely, so immensely, like we can't even fathom it. Absolutely. And even today, you know, now you're reaching a new audience here and, you know, you, you'll reach a new audience. The next podcast you're on, you reach a new audience with your own podcast, with your own books, with the books of other people. Like it's incredible how God gives us that gift and the authority through the Holy Spirit to be able to bless other people. It's just, to me, it's incredible. It's so heartwarming. And I want to point out that it's okay to feel good about that. You know, I think sometimes yeah. as Christian women, we feel like, well, if I am feeling good about it, then I'm I'm in pride and, and that's not a good place to be. I should be more humble. And we kind of knock ourselves down. We do more of that self-deprecating thought. And pride is really when we're feeling good about it in our own power. Yeah, but it's okay to feel amazing about who you are in Christ. It's not about who you are standing alone in the world, but it's about who God made you to be. And there is nothing wrong with accepting and marveling at the power of that, the power that you have as a woman on this earth fed by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that is not pride. That is honoring God's glory because that is taking a look at the core of it and the truth of it and being like, wow, Lord, like I cannot even believe what you've been able to do with my little insignificant nothing life. Yeah. And here we are. And so rest in that glory. That's what resting in his arms really is about. It's not just about the hard times where we ask him to lift us up and take us out of our burden and bring us peace. But it's about in those good times too, just honoring and accepting and being open to receiving the truth of who you are in Christ. Yeah. And praising him for the gifts he's given us, you know, every day. It's like, I like to ask in the mornings, you know, who can I bless today through the gifts that you have generously given me? It's not about me as an individual. It's me through him or him through me. (laughs) I said that backwards, but you know, it's, it really is. And I'm not perfect. I mean, there are some days I forget to do this, but I will say if I can, if I look back on my day, I'm like, oh yeah, I think that was the person I blessed today. And it may be somebody that didn't even hire you. It could be a discovery call, but if you bless them by giving them value, 
you probably transformed their life and changed the trajectory of them, their business, and probably their children. So you think about that and it's just so incredibly empowering and heartwarming. I get excited. We can't can't underestimate the seeds that are planted through us into others. You know, I heard someone once say, some of us are planters and some of us are harvesters. And I think when we work with a client, we see that transformation and we're able to guide them through a process that's harvesting. That's harvesting something that was probably planted by someone else years ago. I mean, those of you listening to this podcast, you probably thought you should write a book at some point, or someone has told you you should write a book. It's true of all the women who come to me. It's not like I convinced them to write a book, right? Someone else planted that seed and I get to work on watering and harvesting that. And then the other way around, sometimes like in podcasts like this, in my own book, there may be people that I'll never see, I'll never talk to, but I was responsible for ushering that seed through the Holy Spirit, through me, into them, into their hearts, and someone else will water and harvest it. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it is we don't always get to see the fruits of our labors, but it's there and we can trust it. And that's part of just having faith in the process. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Danielle, this has been fabulous. I'm like so excited. This conversation went on a totally different route than what I had expected. But sometimes I think that's just God's plan. Like things happen for a reason. I fully believe that. And sure. and listeners, as we as we recap, and like I said, I'm probably going to break this out into two different episodes just because it's so long. But whether I do that or not, I don't know. I have to I have to pray about that. But whether I do that or not, either way. Uh, I want to encourage you that your journey, every single step of the way has been part of God's plan for you. It doesn't matter if it was good or if it was bad, because if it was bad, I guarantee you learned from it. But years and years ago, when my father passed away, he died of cancer and we had eight months with him from the diagnosis to the time he died. And, you know, people would say to me at that time, oh, I know what you're going through. And I got to the point where I wanted to say, oh, really? Your dad had esophageal cancer. You lived a thousand miles away from your family and your dad died because no, their dads were healthy. Their dads were still walking the earth. They had their great family in place, you know, whatever. And it wasn't that they had hurt me, but I, what I recognized and what I realized is that we don't ever know what someone else is truly going through. However, we can take our experiences and share them. And that helps other people go through what they're going through. And I think that if we embrace our journeys and we share what we've experienced, we do nothing but create that ripple effect of good in the world. So I want to encourage you listeners to take a look back. If you've ever thought about writing a book, let's get started today. If you haven't thought about writing a book, but you have a journey and you have a story to tell that may help someone else, it's time. This is your, this is God saying to you, start writing. (laughs) And I guarantee you have a story. I know that's such a common thought to think like, well, I don't really have any story worth telling, or I don't have these big golden moments in my life. Look, if you have been on this planet for like 20 years or more, you have a story period. End of story. Like that is just true. God has been playing out little moments in your life that have shifted you and pivoted you and inspired you and given you insight. And if you look back, you can see those. And so I encourage you to just look back on that. You know, even if you grab a journal and grab a pen and just kind of write out the timeline of your stories, good and bad, and what did they teach you? And what did it feel like to be there in that moment? I guarantee you, you have a powerful story to tell. Oh, amen. Danielle, how can the listeners learn more from you, connect with you, maybe even hire you? Yeah, you can find me at confidentconcept.com. And if you're curious about writing a book to promote your business and to impact the lives of others, get started by going to confidentconcept.com slash book guide. It's how to write a book that actually makes money. And it will give you six things you need to know before you start writing. And you'll get to understand my process and my offer just a little bit better as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for having me. And thanks everyone for listening. It's been so great to spend some time with you today. Absolutely. Listeners, this was a long one. 
I, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to break it out into two or if I'm going to keep it long because the reality is there, there's just a lot of power here. And I think sometimes when you stay to the end, that just shows that you were really interested. And I have to tell you that I'm truly grateful for anybody who stays to the end, no matter how long the episode is. But if you found this information helpful, or if you know someone else that it will be helpful for, please share it. Please let other people know about this incredible resource. Like there's so much goodness here. So please share it. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating or review, my heart would be so, so full. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you next week.